if your goal is to do this. Then keep watching. Hey guys, my name is Zach Ferguson, and this channel is all about helping you guys reach your tricking goals. I may not be the best tricker, but hopefully my experience can help you guys become the best. This is a tutorial for a Cheat 900, or Cheat 9 for short. Cheat 900 is a trick that I struggled with for a very long time, especially early on in my tricking career. I, it wasn't until the last few years that I actually got good at Cheat 9 because I put a concerted effort into learning it, um, but that's generally because I was following progressions that a lot of people in the community say to do, and I kind of disagree with some of those, so I'll talk about that later in the tutorial. Cheat 9 isn't exclusive to tricking, it's actually found in Taekwondo also. I haven't seen many other, if any other, martial arts that contain Cheat 9, but in Taekwondo, they generally call this a 720 kick because you spin twice, but you kind of still don't spin twice. Cheat 9 is also on the Tricking Illuminati's top 10 most overused tricks list. And it's basically the kicking trickers cork. But this video was requested by my friend, Caucasian Gorilla, and it's a very important trick to any trickers arsenal. So let's go ahead and get to the quick tutorial. Okay, so what is a cheat nine? A cheat nine is a cheat setup where you get into the air 360 one time and then do a round kick, front kick, or inside crescent kick. Round kick is really my preferred aesthetic for cheat nine, um, but mine tend to come out more like a front kick. Uh, I'm always going for a round kick though. Another way you can think about it is a tornado kick where you do your cheat 360 first and then throw your kick. Or the way I learned it, a cheat backside nine. But regardless of how you think about it, this tutorial is going to have four different methods to hopefully teach you a cheat nine. So really the only two prerequisites, in my opinion, for this trick are going to be a strong tornado kick with a really high cheat and a good kick, 
and or a backside 900 kick. And just like most requested videos, I don't have tutorials for either of these yet. So good luck. If I do have it, then it will be right there. But for right now, I'm again, just pointing at the corner of the screen. All right, let's get right to method number one. So for method number one, we can just turn a tornado into a cheat nine. Like I was saying earlier, a lot of people say the best progression for a cheat nine is to do a tornado kick, then do a cheat 720, then do a cheat nine and or some kicks in the middle. And while you can probably get it that way, unless your cheat seven is a crescent, and if you want a good aesthetic, really good hook in your cheat seven, then it's actually detrimental to learn a tornado then a cheat seven if your goal is just to get a cheat nine. Because with a hook kick, your hips are gonna be completely different. You're gonna have to cheat, you're gonna have to lean different. Almost everything's gonna be different for a cheat seven setup than a cheat nine. Unless, like I was saying, you do a cheat seven with a crescent, which if you're trying to get to cheat seven doubles and front swing rise out of that and stuff like that, then you do want to practice cheat seven with a crescent. But if your goal right now is just cheat nine, then skip cheat seven altogether. Okay, so for this method, warm up your tornado kick, make sure you're doing your preferred style, whether that's front kick or round kick, just make sure that you are cheating up high, using your arms for your power and getting your height, and then really kind of turning your hips, again, however you're trying to do it, for a solid tornado kick, and then we'll move on. So what you're gonna wanna do is find that target that you were just targeting for your tornado kick. If you don't have a target that you can actually kick, that might actually help you a lot. So if you have something to kick, definitely get that. Um, but if you're complaining about not being able to kick something like you find a tree branch or uh, go to Brendan's video where he taught you how to do the cat toy, uh, link in the description below or find a mirror or something you can kick towards or just pick something on the wall to look at. But either way, what you're gonna do is you're just going to slowly turn yourself away from that target so that you are chambering away from that target at the beginning. So if I twist to my left, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn slightly to my right by about a quarter turn. If my target is you guys, then I'm gonna turn this way and I'm going to kind of chamber up and then across until my knee finds the target over here and then do my tornado kick. A lot of times with a cheat nine, one of the biggest issues is people jump way too early and so they have to spin a lot more than they actually should when they're doing a cheat nine. So you wanna lift it here, but not actually jump until you cross your target, at least for now. Practice that until it's solid and then we'll move on. All you gotta do now is progress it farther and farther. So do it facing away from your target, face away, look over your shoulder, eyes on that target, lift your knee up and towards the target, and then do your round kick for your tornado. Make sure that you use those arms for height and torque so that you can get really used to this when we actually do our full 360. Then we're gonna turn a little bit more so you're facing perpendicular to your target uh, on the opposite side. So basically I'm turning to my left and I'm looking at you guys and then I'm gonna lift this knee here and then try to jump and kind of swing it. It kind of feels almost like a backwards swing, like a rise at this point. Um, so just keep that in mind if it feels weird. This is not the way I learned it and not my technique for cheat nine, but there are many different ways that you can do a cheat nine, so it's totally fine if this is your preferred method. But for me, it felt a little foreign when I was doing this because this is not the way I cheat nine. But either way, it's almost like a rise swing backwards. You're lifting your knee here, but you're really not jumping until it's all the way behind you, almost to your target again, and then you jump and do your tornado kick. From there, you could do one of two things. You could face your target, chamber that knee up towards it, but kind of pull it behind as you chamber it until you find that target again, and then round kick, or you could add the cheat setup now. Two different types of cheat setups you can do for this. For me, personally, I used to cheat across for cheat nine, like I was going sideways, the way I do for a cheat seven or 540 kick or something else. But for me, um, it actually helped me a lot when I learned to do a pseudo K step. It's not a true K step, I know that, don't hate on me about it. But basically what you're doing is you are stepping forward and kind of almost diagonally, and then you're going to kind of pivot your foot away from your target. And then from there, you like release that tension that you have build up, spin to your target as fast as possible, and then lift that knee up into the side. So it's not going straight up at the target, but it's going up at the target and then across before you jump. Then you jump and release it, find your target again, and then kick. That's how I like to cheat nine. But this isn't the only way to cheat setup. If your cheat setup is different, then that's totally fine. Uh, the concept is you want momentum going this way. So again, perpendicular to your target, you want your dom going that direction. And then you are 
riding that momentum and spinning around that momentum with a little bit of height. Uh, and the reason you want sideways momentum is because it helps you twist. So it turns your hips for you and then it'll be a lot easier to kick uh, and twist and everything. However you wanna get your momentum up and going that way and spinning at the same time, then you do you, boo. And if that doesn't help you get your cheat nine, then hopefully method number two, the way I learned it, will. So for method number two, what you wanna do is pick a trick that you already have a round kick in that is relatively easy for you. So for me, it would be something like beatless round or something, cause it's semi-vertical with a good kick, um, but that's not actually what I use to get mine. The way I learned it was taking a cheat nothing or cheat nothing gyro and mixing it with a backside 900. Backside nine was one of the first tricks I learned, uh, but cheat nine took years and years and years, like I was saying. So once I started thinking about it like a backside nine, it actually helped my brain and muscles uh, kind of use that muscle memory from the backside nine and just it clicked. And then it was a lot easier for me to cheat nine. But I know what you're saying, what's a cheat nothing gyro? So basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna step up, get as much height as possible with your cheat and just kind of float there for a second. And then as you're looking at your target and you know you're passing by your target, twist as fast as you can until you see your target again. And then try to kind of stop in midair and then drop out of it. If you don't feel like you can do your cheat, do a 360, find your target again and then drop, you're probably not ready for a cheat nine. You want to feel that float or else you're not gonna be able to kick. You're going to start kicking on the way down and you're gonna be descending and you're gonna be like, no, no, please. When you try to kick and you'll probably slam on your side like I used to when I was learning my cheat nine or a myriad of other errors. But yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory. All you're gonna do is practice that cheat nothing gyro, spotting your target over and over again. And then once you cheat up and you are like in the air and you know you're doing your cheat nothing gyro, just transform it in your brain into your backside nine or other round kicking movement. So if you want it to be like a really high cheat nine, like my friend X, then maybe think about it more like a B twist round or a full round or something like that. Um, but for me, I want to be able to kick a target straight in front of me and be diverse with it. So I want to learn a bunch of different ways. For me, my muscle memory and my ability kind of resonated the most with a backside nine. So that's what worked for me. I just think cheat, get in the air, backside nine. And then I got my cheat nine. And if that didn't work for you, hopefully method number three will. Method number three is doing it completely from a vanish. So what's a vanish? If you twist to your left, you are landing on your left foot, placing your right foot down, and then lifting your left foot again into your cheat. That's what a vanish is. Left, right, left, up in the air, and twist. Um, obviously opposite if you go the opposite way but it's what you see people do all the time. Uh, B-twist vanish nine, cork vanish nine, uh, full vanish nine, scoot vanish nine, anything where you are doing it with momentum and you're landing left, right, and going into your cheat nine. So you can obviously use the other methods with this method because this method is essentially just helping you gain more momentum if your cheat setup sucks like mine did. So I would recommend doing it from a scoot or a master scoot or something that you are very, very comfortable with getting momentum out of. For me, scoot is one of my most powerful setups, so that's what I wanted to use. Basically, you're gonna do your scoot as far as you can. Really focus on distance on this. Scoot out, land that left foot, get your chest up immediately as that right foot is coming down, so it's chest up, and then you're going to put that right foot way back behind you. Some people like to bring it closer for height, but for now, for learning, I think it's easier if you put it way behind you, and then you're going to lift your, your knee at your target. So the easiest way to explain it for a vanish is to start perpendicular to your uh, target. So look at your target and then face your direction of momentum or your dom and then scoot in that direction, turn and then face that target as you're standing up. So it's step, step, look at your target, knee up at your target, then you jump and you turn. Again, just like with the cheat nothing gyro, I think you should do your vanish and get dummy comfortable with it. Make sure that vanish is built in and then once you can do a vanish nothing gyro, then you just add a round kick. You don't even have to think about it like a different trick because most of the time, if you do a really good vanish, you're already at your target before you realize it and you can just pop out a kick really quick. Kick really quick. But yeah, there's not much else to say with that. Uh, do a really strong vanish, get in the air, find that target, and then round kick. And you got yourself a cheat nine 
or front kick or whatever kick you want to do with your right leg if you twist to your left. And if that didn't help you, hopefully method number four will. Method number four is doing a rapid round. So some people call this a cheat seven rapid round. Um, and yeah, I guess it's technically that, but I feel like that kind of confuses the practitioner, especially when you're first teaching them. So the easiest way to explain this is just think of it like a cheat rapid round. So a rapid is like a narabong or autobahn or basically whenever you are landing on your kicking leg and then hopping and then doing the kick with your kicking leg. So it's like skipping from one leg to the other and kicking. That is a rapid. So for this method, we're going to do it on the ground first and not have any rapid. So you're going to step across, pivot 360 and just find that target twice with that knee. So you look at the target, lift the knee past the target, to the side, around, back to the target. And then once you find that target again, you just put it down and then do your round kick. Then we just add the rapid. So we step across, do the 360, find that target, stop at our target with our knee, jump and round kick with the leg that we were standing on and pivoting on. So you just land on the left leg by chambering up your right leg and round kicking or front kicking. Then we're just gonna get really comfortable with that spin and go faster. Once we can do it super, super easy, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start jumping at your target. So you're going to pivot across, lift that knee up and at your target, and then slightly to the left a little bit and jump and spin back to your target. So ideally you want to jump 360 and land with your knee facing your target and then bounce and round kick. This may take a long time and a lot of people are too powerful uh, and put too much effort into your cheat nine um, to be able to do the rapid. So you kind of have to do this almost lazy. Some people will have to do it really hard to get the rapid around. That's just people that aren't really used to cheat setups. But if you're really good at powerful cheat kicks, then you probably have to underpower this a little bit, but it's basically lift your knee at your target, 360, land with your knee facing your target, then jump and round kick or whatever kick you're trying to do. Right leg, remember. And then you wanna keep doing that until your jump is crazy high. So you do a really high chamber and you kind of spin back to the target really quickly in the air with your knee facing your target and you feel like you can switch and then you're ready to go for it. You literally just do the rapid, but in the air. So you go up, you 360, you find that target, and then you switch really fast, just like a rapid, but you land on the left leg and kick with your right leg, and you got yourself a cheat nine. But I'm almost out of time, so let's go ahead and get to common mistakes. All right, so the first most common mistake I see is kind of like a bunch lumped into one. Having a really, really terrible cheat setup. If you don't have a good cheat setup or you're doing your cheat setup wrong, then your cheat nine is gonna be garbage trash money. So concepts for your cheat setup. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna step across. So you're getting your momentum going that way. Then you're gonna lift your target. Then you're gonna lift your target. Then you're gonna lift your knee at your target and kind of pass your target slightly. Um, a lot of people call this over cheating, but it's really not over cheating because you're still facing your target with your pelvis. Bring your knee over to the side like this, then jump. A lot of people jump too early. So they'll step across and jump right now but the reason that's bad is because your momentum is actually going to pull you this way because of the way your body is made so whenever we point our knee at something we generally want to jump towards that thing that's just the way our body is made to like run and jump so what you want to do is you want to stop with your pelvis facing your target let that knee come across a little bit and then jump here and then spin as fast as you can because momentum is going to want to pull you that way but if you spin quick then you'll find that target again and still be traveling slightly to the left and slightly up uh, so that you can actually kick so make sure you don't actually jump until you find your target again so it's step across keep that foot planted and then turn all the way to it and then jump so that you can have a strong cheat setup. A lot of times what will happen is people will jump before they jump. So they'll jump into their cheat setup and then try to jump again. And all that does is kill your power and does not give you any upwards momentum. That's one of the biggest issues I had with cheat setup when I was starting. There's a million other things I can say about cheat setup, but that's gonna suffice for now. The next common mistake I see is kicking too early. So maybe you have a really good cheat, but you start kicking like there. So you lift your knee at your target and then you're like coming across here. Yeah, okay, go. And you kick right here and then you try to hold it out until you find your target again. This ain't no cheat nine double. Uh, even on cheat nine double, you don't wanna hold it out the whole time. So make sure that you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait until you see your target and then you fire your kick. I kind of think of it like a gun sight or a bow sight or something. This knee should find your target before you release the bullet or the arrow for the kick the second time around. 
And the third most common mistake I see is just having a bad kick. If your round kick and your front kick looks like trash, it doesn't matter how good you cheat and spin, then your cheat nine is not gonna look good. So make sure that you polish those kicks, get a good wheat stone and just polish away by like kicking something. It's not actually like a wheat stone, it's just like, like kick a lot and get your form solid and like really work on it. I have a round kick tutorial there if you need to work on that. Um, but yeah, just get your kick better and it will help you a lot with your cheat nine. It's kind of like a duh, but a lot of times people trying cheat nine just have really, really bad basics. And that was me, man. So it might be you. And since I'm not that amazing at cheat nine, my cheat nine's, you know, solid. Uh, I like it, but it's not like God tier cheat nine. It's not God key. Um, I thought that I would actually ask my friend who is really good at it to give you some thoughts because I actually taught him his cheat nine, but then he took it and flew away with it. I actually broke it down for him through DMs and he sent me a video and I kind of like showed him what he was doing right and wrong. And then, yeah, he just took it and made it his own. So it was really amazing. And you guys see him all the time if you watch this channel in my samplers. So let's all take a minute and listen to my friend X. The specific clip that I go to every time. <coughs> Let's talk cheat nine. Uh, I'm actually gonna break it down into a couple of short steps. The first step is gonna be spotting. It doesn't matter if you're going for a cheat nine or a cheat 16, you need to spot. Uh, spotting is gonna keep you safe, but it's also gonna make sure that your kicks look solid. So specifically for cheat nine, um, there's actually only one spot, but what's gonna happen is you're gonna look at it twice. Uh, the first point is going to be before you take off. So you should be looking for the target that you're going to kick before you leave the ground. Um, after you've done your rotation in the air and you're ready to kick again, you're going to look for that same target to get the kick off. And I find it, with this method, I have a lot more air awareness than I would otherwise. Now, with spotting out of the way, we can look at the kick. And with the kick, there are three important pieces. The first is going to be that you chamber before you kick. And all that is, is that means you're going to bend your knee at this position here before you've extended your leg. The second step is to extend the leg. After you've done that, you re-chamber. So you bring that knee back in. And what that's gonna do for you is that's gonna give you the aesthetic that you want with your cheat nine. Ah, cheat. So the last thing we're going to get into is how you develop more height in your cheat nine, which is something I don't see a whole lot of that I'd like to give some insight to. What it really comes down to is using your wrap leg in tandem with your arms. What that means is, and in my case, I trick to the left. So that's the example I'm going to be speaking from. When my left leg leaves the ground for the kick, you'll notice that my arms are moving up with the leg. What that's doing in tandem with the spot as well, it helps me gain as much vertical height as possible without having to worry about falling off balance one way or the other. I don't have a lot of time, so I can only drop you off a couple of tips, but if you do want me to go into more detail, my Instagram is here, love talking tricks, feel free to hit me up. I hope this helped you and keep training. Thank you so much, X. I appreciate you being in this video. And if you guys want to hear more from him, go ahead and shoot him a DM on Instagram. Also follow him on Instagram because he is an amazing tricker and he is underrated. So go give him a follow. But hopefully that helped you get or improve your cheat nine, Caucasian gorilla. And if this is your first time watching my videos, then welcome. And please subscribe to this channel so that you can help me on my quest to a thousand subs. We are at like 940 something, so we're getting super close. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you want to see from me next. I'm getting a ton of comments now and I try to respond to all of them, but I do read them all and I will respond to them eventually. Some of you know I will respond even like months later um, just because I hate leaving people hanging. So um, please leave a comment. Even if I don't get to it right away, then I do see it. And if it did help you, please leave a like on the video for the YouTube algorithm and just telling me that you liked it. Anyway, I got to go to work. So I'll see you guys later. Frick, I forgot to turn up the